Hello friends, I'm here today to start a new bookmas video. This one is going to be a reading vlog. Um, I asked for some underrated romance reads from this year. Um, ones that didn't really blow up on booktube, on bookstagram. And I got four, so we're going to read those for this reading vlog. The first book that I'm going to start with is the recommendation from Jen at the Book Refuge. Um, honestly, I looked up this one and didn't look up the others because... A recommendation from Jen could have been anything, so I looked this one up a little bit before I started just to see what to expect, um, and it sounds like a romantic suspense. Uh, so I started it this morning, and it's about these adopted brothers who, um, they were in the same foster home and it was not a good situation, so, so they were rescued from that home, um, and it sounds like they grew up kind of in the wilderness, kind of like survivalists. Um, and so now the main character, he was kind of living off grid again and everything. Um, I think it's that he was ex-military and ex-law enforcement. Um, and now he's living kind of off the grid and his brothers have come and asked him to move to Alaska, um, because they've inherited these businesses, I think is what happened. Um, and so he's attempting <laughs> Like where I cut off it was he told them he'd think about it. So um, that is where I'm at so far. I will come back and give you an update when I know a little bit more about what's happening in the, I don't even think I said. The book is called Not a Hero by Cherie, I'm going to say Cherise Sinclair. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm currently reading. Hey guys, so I am about 60% or so into Not a Hero and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um... So, I think the last time I updated was, uh, when his brothers had tried to, like, had asked him to move to this Alaskan town. Well, he did. Um, and then our female main character, um, she's a librarian slash professor. I still didn't, I didn't quite understand exactly what she did in Chicago, um, but like one of her side jobs is research and she was doing this like freelance research uh for this guy who came up on some very shady people and when he went to investigate the like place that she had found during her research he got caught and was tortured and gave up her name so they came after her um and she like really injured one of them and was able to get away so uh that's how she ended up in the Alaskan town she's like going by a fake name and trying to hide out um and Gabe the main character uh he's <clears throat> I think he's kind of seen like a kindred spirit in her a little bit and he really wants to um earn that trust uh, with her and to get the truth from her so he like helps her get a job and uh it was really sweet uh she like accidentally made a comment about being a librarian and all of a sudden he like put it to the town that there should they should reopen the library and I thought that was really sweet and he like helped her get it all set up and it just opened um but yeah so they slept together pretty fast, which I was a little worried about. Um, but now it's kind of like a, when will they do it again? Sexual tension almost. Um, and kind of frustrating me to be honest. I'm like, okay, come on now. Come on now. Um, but yeah, they are kind of in a bit of a, in a bit of a, I don't know how to say it, like, they promised, like, they said only one night, but now they both want to do it again, but he doesn't really want to do it until he can earn her trust and, like, get the truth from her about why she's there, and I think she kind of wants to give him that trust, but she just hasn't gone there yet, like, in her brain. So, yeah, that's where we're at now. I'm a bit, like, I'm a bit frustrated with her, because, Part of me really likes the tension that of 
the fact that he doesn't know who she is and what happened. But then another part of me is like, tell him already. So, that's where we're at now. I'm going to go read some more. So, I finished Not a Hero. Um, I, I think I'm going to land on four stars. Uh, it was really good. And when I was reading it, I was really into it. I really wanted to find out what was going to happen next. Um, but when I wasn't reading it, I kind of didn't care that I wasn't getting a chance to read it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I don't think this is a spoiler, but it might be. Um, so she's running away from this killer who attacked her and everything. And that is the, like, big conflict, is that this person finds her and everything. Um, and so I just didn't think that that was anything different, anything spectacular, amazing, about a, like, within the story. I don't know. I don't know what I wanted it to be, because that makes the most sense in my head. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give it four stars. I did really enjoy it, uh, like I said, so... I also started today 50 Ways to Win Back Your Lover. I forget who the author is, but the cover will be here. Um, this is a rec from April. <clears throat> and so I started this today. I got a couple of chapters in. So far, the main character is this guy who is in witness protection. And like he and his family had to... Uh, go into witness protection when he was a teenager and he left his um like high school sweetheart rather abruptly um and now he's in an airport with his brother uh and the only way they could get back to where they live now is through like a connecting flight to their old home state and uh the ex like high school sweetheart is going to be on the plane too. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, I don't think I've ever read a book where one of the characters is in witness protection. Like I've read stuff like the last one where they just like say their name is something different. Um, but not ever or like their official name has changed. So we're going to find out what's going on with this one. Oh my gosh, y'all. So I finished 50 Ways to Win Back Your Lover. Um, I'm going to give this five stars. This was so good. Um, so there's a lot in it. Um, there's not... It's a small town romance. There's no suspense if you're not into that. I... There's a lot of heartbreak in this book, though. Um... It took me on a bit of a ride, not gonna lie. Um, there was, so he goes back to hometown after leaving, or after they get, like, something happens to where they don't have to be in witness protection anymore. Um, so he goes back to his hometown because he's seen hit the, his high school sweetheart at the airport and he kind of just, like, ran up to her and said something and then ran away. Um, so she... I wish we, I kind of wish we'd gotten her perspective, but I also think it's really sweet that we did it, that we were only getting, um, like only getting his perspective so that we could see kind of how hesitant she was and kind of just see that process and not really her trying to rationalize. I liked, I kind of like that we didn't get to see her perspective. Um, but yeah, so he finds out he doesn't have to stay in witness protection. He goes back to the hometown um, the, so a lot of the other brothers are like, mm -mm, I'm not going back. The mom says it's got too many bad memories for her. So he's the only one that goes. Um, and it's a process, you know, uh, there's been 10 years of him living this other life and 10 years of her being apart from him. And there's things that they have to work through. And it was so sweet. Um, but then there's also the secret that she has about their time apart. And I thought I knew what that was. But then it popped up as something for one of the other brothers. And I was like, well, I don't think she's going to do it for both of them. 
so I didn't really know what was going to happen in this one, what the big secret was, but that broke my heart too. I, yes, it broke my heart, but then it put it back together. So all was well. There is an HEA, um, but it does kind of tease the next brother's book. I need to figure that, I need to figure out if that one is out, but this one's at a 2022 release. So I don't really know if it will be out yet. Um, but if it's not, I'm definitely going to be picking it up when it does come out. Um, I looked to see if Kelly Siskind was at any of the signings and no such luck. So I'm going to have to order these in paper or order this in paperback because it was so good, y'all. So good. Yeah. Thank you, April, for this. Even Like I said, it broke my heart a little bit, but it did put it back together. So for that, I am thankful. So I have two books recommended from Caitlin at The Love Librarian, but I don't know which one I want to read. I think I'm only going to have time to read one and I'll have to put the other one on my recommended reads uh, for next, for 2023. So when I know which one I'm going to pick up, I will come back and give you an update. Hey y'all, so it is Saturday morning now. Um, I decided last night to start reading Next of Kin. Um, I forget who the author is. I'll put the title of the book here. Uh, this was one of Caitlin's recommendations. And y'all, I finished it this morning. <laughs> I read a couple of chapters last night, probably about five or six. And then this morning... <clears throat> excuse me, this morning I didn't feel like getting out of bed. And so I just got on the Kindle app on my phone and <laughs> finished the book. Um, I'm going to give this one five stars too. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, it's another one where like plot wise, not a lot actually happens. Um, but the things that do happen are just so sweet and so wholesome and, like, I really was rooting for these two to get together, and then they do get together kind of early in the book, um, and then I was kind of just, like, waiting for the other, what's the, waiting for the other foot to drop? Is that the, is that the phrase? Anyway, I was kind of just, like, waiting for something bad to happen, and then when it did, um, it was more internal for the love interest, and so it was... It was some kind, it was a kind of a reaction to a trauma that he's had um, throughout his whole life. I haven't even mentioned what this book is about. This book is about two people who are trying to get custody of their siblings. Um, her birth mom has had a new baby um, and it can't stay sober for very long. And then um, I think his mom had passed away and his dad had addiction issues as well. So he was trying to get custody of his 15 year old brother. Um, and due to, like, the CPS arrangement, which I don't think would ever happen, uh, they, like, set up, uh, people who are trying to get custody to, like, because he had a stable job, but she had a stable home, and so they, like, balance each other out to meet all the requirements. Um, but yeah, when they do, it's a bunch of tension, it's kind of a, it's a forced proximity because they're having to live together. Um, I thought it was really sweet. His brother is deaf and, uh, communicates through sign language and she actually knows sign language because of her adoptive father. And I thought it was really sweet, her interactions with, um, the brother and then his interactions with the baby. And yes, this was, it was just, it was so, it was so feel good. Even though, like, the situations of them having to, get, having to get custody of their siblings is not a great situation. It was just so wholesome, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm going to give it five stars. Um, I'm glad I really enjoyed all three of these books. Um, this is going to be it for this reading vlog. But yeah, this was, this was such a fun time. I really enjoyed it. If you have any other books you think were underrated this year, leave them for me down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all next time. Bye!